Peace be Jesus and Mary. Hallelujah. <laughs> On behalf of uh, all of the friars here at Our Lady's Chapel, I'd like to wish uh, each one of you a very blessed Easter. Alleluia is a, uh, a word that we haven't heard uh, for six weeks. It comes from the uh, from uh, two Hebrew uh, words that mean praise Yahweh, or in English it means uh, praise God or, or praise the Lord. And uh, we should praise God, uh, you know, with our whole heart today, especially, you know, because, uh, because we celebrate the most important event in human history. Jesus Christ has triumphed over death and risen from the grave. Now, you know, have you ever noticed how many people in our society are terrified of death, you know? And uh, I guess it should be no surprise uh, if the, uh, the children at Fatima saw souls falling into hell like snowflakes in 1917. You know, I mean, who wants to do that? Uh, and we know the, uh, the world was a, a, little, a little more godly uh, back then than it is today. Today, uh, we do everything we can you know, to live longer. Um, for a Christian, you know, to experience this would be a, a mystery considering the, uh, the goal of life is to get to heaven. Uh, you know, just a moment ago, St. Paul uh, reminded us that we must uh, set our sights on things above, where uh, Christ is seated at God's right hand. Uh, so, you know, why would we uh, want to hang around here any longer than we have to? You know, if, I mean, if we can be with Jesus and Mary. Um, for Christians, death isn't uh, something to be afraid of. Death uh, has been destroyed in Jesus Christ. Death is now the, the doorway that we have to pass through if, if we want to uh, enter into a new life of eternal glory. You know, it's not something that, that we should try to avoid. Uh, the reason, of course, why uh, people want to prolong their life is because they're not ready to stand in judgment uh, before the living God. You know, they're, uh, they're living their life according to their own will, not his. Um, but Jesus gives us the remedy for that uh, today as well. You know, it was on the night our Lord rose from the dead that he instituted the sacrament of confession. Uh, you know, he breathed on his apostles and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you retain, they are retained. You know. And this is so important to our Lord. Uh, it was that, uh, you know, it was at his request that the Sunday after Easter, uh, next Sunday, has become Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, he's told us that he wishes to shower down his, and just shower down an ocean of mercy upon us, you know, more than we even wish to receive it or to ask for it. And of course, uh, the place to ask for the, it is in the confessional. Um, it's only there with, uh, a sincere confession that 
our sins are forgiven. It's only there that we find uh, the peace that comes with absolution. Um, so, you know, if we're in a state of grace, striving to love God with our whole life, our whole heart, uh, through a life of prayer and penance, um, then we have absolutely nothing uh, to fear in death. Rather, it's, it's something that we should look forward to. Um, after all, you know, every Mass, we pray after the All Father that, uh, that we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. And the Lord comes for each one of us. You know, the end of the world comes for each one of us uh, the day that we die. So we don't have to be worried about all these uh, prophets of gloom and doom about the world coming to an end. As long as we're ready, it doesn't matter. Um, and this is what our faith is all about. You know, we don't have to uh, look for ways to uh, hang on here, you know. Uh, what we have to do is look for ways to get to heaven. We, we know that uh, the only way that leads to eternal life is Jesus Christ. You know, there's no one in this world that will allow us to live forever. Um, not Mohammed, not Buddha, or Confucius, or Joseph Smith, um, our Lord Jesus Christ has promised us eternal life with him and has uh, given us everything we need to achieve and fulfill this promise. The question is, you know, do we really believe this? Uh, That's what we're going to state in a moment, you know, when we renew our baptismal vows. Uh, so we need to uh, look very seriously at ourselves after having come through the 40 days of Lent where we were trying to uh, die to our passions and, and put ourselves and all the things of this world aside so that, uh, that we could focus on a life in Christ, you know, and today as we celebrate the, uh, the resurrection, you know, we need to ask ourselves in the depths of our heart, you know, am I filled with hope in the resurrection? Not merely uh, do I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I mean, none of us would be here today if we didn't believe. But do we really hope in our resurrection from the dead? You know, there's a, a story uh, that's been floating around the internet for some time about Jeremy, a, a terminally uh, ill student that was uh, 12 years old and in the second grade. He was uh, actually attending a Catholic school, St. Teresa. And he, uh, he just couldn't learn. Um, you know, he made unusual noises, and uh, he often drooled. And, and to most of the kids, you know, he was an object of humor. Uh, to his teacher, uh, Jeremy was uh, an exasperating, uh, difficult student. Uh, and three months before, his, before uh, he died, both the, the students and the teacher changed their opinion of him. Uh, Miss Miller gave an assignment before Easter that required all the students to uh, take an empty uh, plastic egg and, and bring it back the next day with something in the egg that represented new life. And the teacher planned to call uh, Jeremy's parents that night and uh, explain the assignment 
so that uh, Jeremy would, uh, would do what she asked. But, uh, you know, several things came up uh, that evening and she, it just slipped her mind uh, to call them. So when she opened the, the 19 eggs with the children, you know, the first one had a, a flower in it. And uh, the teacher affirmed that uh, the, the fact that a flower represents new life. And the second egg uh, contained a butterfly, uh, which everyone agreed signified new life. The uh, third egg had a, a moss-covered rock, uh, which demonstrated new life as well. Uh, and to the chagrin of uh, Miss Miller, the fourth egg was empty, and she quickly guessed that it was Jeremy's egg, and uh, you know she laid it down without comment, uh, so as not to embarrass him. And Jeremy piped up, uh, "Miss Miller, you know, aren't aren't you going to talk about my egg?" And uh, flustered, uh, Miss Miller said, uh, "Jeremy." Your egg is empty. And Jeremy uh, looked softly into her eyes and replied, Yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. And uh, Miss Miller uh, later spent the recess period uh, crying with a softened heart. You know, three months later, uh, when uh, Jeremy died, his uh, theology was represented by a 19 plastic uh, eggs on his casket, you know, all of which were empty. And the, the great hope of Easter is found in an empty tomb that promises new life. May God bless you and Mary keep you.